you, we have this movie coming up, My Son Hunter. You've gotten some resistance on it. First of all, when is it set to come out now? Well, we'll hope to make an announcement within the next month or so. So we're pretty excited about the platforming of it. And um, I think uh, we shot it over in Serbia. Uh, we just finished it like about a week ago. Finally got the final. And it's quite, it's, uh, I think it's, uh, I'm proud of the film. I did not demonize Hunter or Joe. Uh, but we tell this, there was a film that I was affected by that, that when I read the script, I felt that I should take the approach of American Hustle, the David O. Russell film. And the frustration I have with a lot of conservative movies and a lot of left wing movies that deal with conservative political issues is the total demonization of, uh, uh, of, of what's happening instead of being able to say, okay, we can disagree, but we could also maybe humanize in some way, even though the corruption is there, even though the drug use and the, uh, the, the other, you know, I, I went to Hunter's book, Beautiful Things, to learn about his uh, confessional novel, to learn about his motivations and his feelings on things, because I didn't want it to be just a a conservative bashing of something. So I was quite affected by his book and his journey and his pain. And people that see it, at least conservatives go, you made me feel for this guy, mm -hmm. which is what I wanted. Because I don't think we should talk to just one side or the other. I think it's a time in our country where we have to take culture in a way and jujitsu it. So the left can hear us, they can be entertained. And the film is, uh, is entertaining. It's factual, it, it does take some license, but that's dramatic license with anything to make it more interesting. And um, it has a, uh, 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 there is a powerful message in this, uh, in this film. Now, it hasn't come without uh, some infiltration. I noticed on the Twitter page, which I don't even know with you as the director of My Son Hunter, how involved are you are in the Twitter page for My Son Hunter, the film. But I saw on that that there was infiltration, that it, they said a, a lawyer for Hunter spied on the filming. I didn't want anybody on the set, by the way. And um, the producers had them sign a non-disclosure or something, or they had some some interest to Kevin Morris. Kevin yes. Morris, known as Biden's sugar brother and lawyer, scooped out the My Son Hunter documentary without letting them know his connections to the first son. So this is the guy, nice man. I met him on the set. Take a look at that, Christy. See that? There he is. Now, what made them all excited was he was the lawyer for Trey Parker and the other guy, the South Park guys. So they thought, Oh, interesting. And I don't know what they told them, but I didn't want anybody on the set. I, I don't think I, I spoke to them a lot, uh, but I did say I did not want to demonize Hunter Biden. That was, that was my purpose was not to demonize him and to tell the story. And lo and behold, I find out later on that this was an infiltration in some way. I, now, I don't know what <clears throat> to what ends, but the other interesting fact of, of the matter is the hotel we were staying at in Serbia, in Belgrade, I was told a month before Hunter Biden was staying at the same hotel. So it's very interesting that he was in Serbia. And um, I mean, I don't know what deals were being made or what emissaries were being made or what conversations were being held. Because as we know now from a lot of the news that if you believe the news, I mean, I, 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 I don't, I, I, you know, I look at, Propaganda is propaganda, both from the right and from the left. So it's very difficult to find out. And you don't want to, especially at this particular time in our nation, we don't want to do more alienation. But we want to be able to get to the truth mm -hmm. and be able to at least have a dialogue about it without people putting up defense mechanisms and not being able to infiltrate the steel wall of their own mind trap because of the Kool-Aid everybody drinks. And that's both on the right and the left. So, but you can't help but wonder if what Hunter is saying, that he made deals for his father, that he was the emissary for his father in, in some instances. Now, that remains to be seen. Uh, and, uh, but they did make a lot of deals and we talk about it and show them in the Ukraine and in China and other places, as well as- Were you able things. to integrate any of the 
um, leaked material from his laptops that were left behind or any of that, or did was that left out? Well, we, this is the, the, the film takes place basically the night that his laptop is found. And the story is told through the eyes of a 25 year old left wing activist who also is a stripper to play for her college education, who winds up meeting Hunter, not knowing who he is initially, and then starting a relationship with him. And then in the course of this, you now unfold the story of what happened. So there are incidents that happened that are shown and things that reference from the book, you know, from a variety of sources. Um, our filmmaker, the, the screenwriters, Philem and Anne and, uh, and Brian, they, you know, they are very, they're journalists first. So they really, you know, get, want to get the facts and, and we're very particular in not making any suppositions. Right. You beyond don't to, dramatic. Don't yeah. No. Muddled, and then muddled with, yeah. with just rumors or anything like that. Yeah. Before, yeah. Yeah. This is not that. Right. Before we gloss over this too much, because I'm looking at the Daily Mail article right now, and it says that Kevin Morris said he was working on a documentary exposing Hunter Biden's corruption in order to gain access. He I lied. don't know if that's so. I don't know if that, yeah, that's, that's so. I, I just know that they wanted him. They were on the set. They were doing a documentary. I don't know if it was about the corruption, but they were there under false pretense. They weren't for, forthcoming. They infiltrated in a certain way. They didn't say, and I had a funny feeling about it, that there was something held in reserve because I remember meeting, and I'm pretty good sense of bullshit detector in me, you know, maybe because of being an actor for so many years, you look for the truth. Uh, or at least you try to find the truth or try to, you have a, a, a different, way of engaging with people and uh, and there was something that was amiss for me and I don't believe I spoke to them but the actors did because you know uh, they're ready to you know uh, promote a film and somebody's doing a documentary and they were told by the producers that they were okay and vetted and whatnot so maybe they just came around I have no idea but it's interesting they flew in a private jet to Serbia to come and visit the set. Do you know if they got anything out of this visit? Is there going to be any legal action have, or anything? Or I have no, I have no idea. Really, really. I, have no idea. I, I don't think it can be because everything has been out there. Everything is sourced. It's not made up. You know, and they have, you know, you have when you do a film, you have a thing called E and O insurance, errors and omissions. And lawyers go over a film and they tell you, you know, we had to change a couple of names for the uh, for some of the Ukraines and some of the mafia people, maybe. But uh, otherwise, it was, you know. Uh, I guess uh, that, that I'm just a creative person. I'm directing the film, telling a story, trying to tell it honestly with the characters, with a sense of humor and sarcasm, of course, and uh, uh, basically the narrative. The rest of that stuff is up to the producers. If you want to see this process, I recommend everyone see a TV series called The Offer. It's really the inside of, of, of a Hollywood thing. It's based on a, a gentleman, Al Ruddy, who produced The Godfather. And I watched it. I binge watched it. It's 10 episodes. The last one comes out Thursday. But it really gives you a peek, at least in Hollywood, of the 70s, 80s, and 90s, you know? and the conflict <coughs> but very interesting you should watch it it's 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 well done riveting great acting but that gives you a peek into what coppola was fighting the director and what the producers wanted and what you know other people were coming after it's interesting awesome. similar very good so I think many people can appreciate that you weren't trying to use this film as just a way to trash this individual and that you can show the human side of things. I think people's frustration just comes from what seems to be the complete lack of interest from mainstream media and ever covering anything that if it, he was named something else would be big news. Um, so, I mean, this is kind of filling the gap there, but I guess what I'm saying- they are the you didn't, you didn't the use the opportunity to, to drag them through the mud, is what I'm saying. 
Yeah, well, the, the, the media, as you brought up, is the connivers of Caesar's Senate. Right now you have a, the fourth or the fifth column. And it's astounding to me uh, when you see incidents and um, that, it, that it bloated out of proportion, absolutely bloated and injected with a, a venom and with, a, uh, with lies and deception. And the American people buy it. A large, a large portion of the American people buy it. Some are more waking up to it. And we have not held, and I, and I blame both parties. Both parties are at fault for what's, what we see in the, in the nation because they both they have not served the American people, but they've served each other. You know, you, need, you, have, you have a Schumer, you've got a, a Schiff, you've got a Pelosi. These people have been in politics. You've got McConnell. They've been in politics since ancient era. And the same mistakes keep happening. And they change sides. It's so interesting how an event in 10 years, in 15 years, like Biden, in 20 years, it's an absolute flip-flop. Now, okay, I understand people grow. They grow in their understanding of an issue, but for political expediency and then for hurting the American people, like, and, and, and the right, the right doesn't know how to use jujitsu. Jujitsu, you take the force of, of someone coming at you and you use that force. You don't go up against it. You use it and redirect it.